So when you look at nine months later, Sal, at the work that you're doing, are you still doing a considerable amount of Sandy-related work uh, that's just sort of working its way through the pipeline? Yeah, the bulk of the, the, the big work, see what would happen is immediately you've got the emergency work and the people who are willing to just pay no matter what. That work was done first. People would just wrote a check, they'll deal with the insurance company later, and fortunately there were some people with the wherewithal to be able to do that. That work was done first. Second was the work all across the middle of the island where trees fell in homes, that was regular homeowner insurance, that work got done real quick. That work was done within a couple of months, that was pretty much dried out. Last is the flood work. Flood insurance, uh, people having to deal and work with FEMA, that work is still ongoing. The bulk of it, done in many cases where they had flood insurance, but there's a tremendous amount of people still struggling with finding the resources uh, and working with FEMA and the insurance companies to rebuild their homes. And that's gonna be something that'll continue to dwindle in for a while now. It won't be coming in like it did, you know, 80 or 100 some calls a day, It'll, but it'll continue to dwindle in. And, uh, you know, it's the type of thing where you've got to respond to it. Now we have more time to respond to it, mm -hmm. more time to work with them, work with their insurance companies. Right. It becomes almost like a normal standard job that we yep. would do. You're not operating on the timeline and the pressure that you did initially six and seven and eight months ago. Now it goes more into the proper pri pipeline of work. Did your team get stretched out and, and overworked for a period of time? And how did you guys manage yeah. that? Yeah, my team, my team was, was stretched out considerably. Uh, the, uh, the stress that was put on them was enormous. I actually uh, I did the best I can to work alongside them. I was in a pickup truck, jeans and work boots, out selling, out producing, out swinging a hammer. I was doing it. And I think one thing as a leader, when you see, and you know, we're not um, Exxon, but we're a big company. We've got over 40, I think we're at 42 or 47 uh, people in my sales department selling. We've got a huge amount of, uh, of project managers. We, um, we've been one of the largest, I think we're listed full, largest full service remodeling contractor in the country or right there in the top. And I'm the president and CEO and I'm up on a roof and I'm installing some plywood or installing shingles or loading a dumpster. I think the team seeing that coming from me and my vice president Doug and the rest of my senior management team, I think the team seeing that, they're like, wow, if they're gonna do it, then you know we can, we can do it. But they had a tremendous amount of stress in them because not only were they being worked, overworked, they had the stress of the homeowners they were dealing with. And these homeowners were just you know, they, they lost a lot, and they're, they want to get done. And we all know remodeling fever sets in on a regular job. Right. How about having your house flooded with eight feet of water and you want to get done and everything? Right. We had a lot of that going on. Um, we worked with our people. We tried to have patience for them. We tried to be a little bit more understanding that things weren't going to be as perfect mm -hmm. and that I have to be a little more understanding that, you know, my level of expectations had to be more reasonable with what was going on. Mm -hmm. I also brought in experts experts to talk to them and uh, kind of do therapy meetings to sit and hey you know we know you guys are going through a lot and you're dealing with a lot of emotions Long Island was hit with this tremendous disaster and you're helping the recovering process which is means you're dealing with people face to face that have been in the disaster did that help yeah it did help they were very appreciative that we brought in experts to sit and talk to them and to listen and to basically help them you know, compartmentalize what was going on and to not let it eat them out, you know, okay. eat their hearts out and have them so emotionally uh, disturbed over what was going on. The stress, the emotional breakdowns, all of that, that's a lot. So we brought in people to work with that. We brought in people to help me understand what I needed to do as a leader to understand what they were facing. Okay. And a sales rep was facing it too because they weren't doing their normal sales process with the normal lead time. They were going in and they had to deal with insurance companies and homeowners and be part of almost running the job because there was so much that was, you know, that had to be done that just wasn't easy to just kind of make it clean and detailed for the, for the project manager.